Table Football Monthly? Don't mind if I do! Welcome to the November edition of Table Football Monthly. We have packed this show solid for you this month, but Danielle is here to help me uh, with the draw so that we can choose the winner of last month's competition. We asked you which French footballer played for Newcastle, Spurs and Aston Villa. It was, of course, the housewife's choice, David Ginola. Loads of you, I'll hold them back to the front, loads of you got the answer. It's a massive pile here. So, to make the draw legal and above board, we have bought in a vintage teapot. Right, we're going to need a bit of close-up camera work here. Are you ready? Yeah. So, what we'll do, Danielle, in fact, you do it as you're the lady. You cut okay. the pack and I'll cut the pack. Then, break yours in half. Drop your half in the teapot. Half from me. Half from me. Right, let's put the lid on. Shake it up to brew. Shake it all about. <laughs> right, close your eyes. All right, you ready? Yeah, and it's had a good shake. Reach in, have a rummage. I've got one. <laughs> Don't look yet. There are over 70 of you in there with the correct answer. Turn it round. The, the winner, winner is... Glenn Springate. Well done, Glenn. These two fantastic teams, Croatia and France, are yours. And I'm genuinely going to miss them. They are fantastic. So, we'll have to get in touch with them after the show. They'll be on their way to you. We'll send you an email as soon as we get back in the office. Right, now you may have noticed on the front of the table here, we have got new Subutio sets. Ah, oh, I wondered what they were. There'll be a competition to win a new Subutio England versus Brazil set after we've had the feature. So, stay with us and we'll see you in a bit. Today's product review comes all the way from Spain, from Netcam Force 11 under license from Hasbro, the new Subutio Real Madrid set. Now this set features the new flexible Subutio player type, evidently a lot less fragile than the originals. Let's lift the lid. And first impressions, oh dear. Looks like the pitch, instructions, players and goals have just been tossed into an empty box. This reminds me of the first Subutio sets back in the late 40s and 50s. But at least the early Subutio set has a certain charm about it. Can't be an inlay card though. This 53 set beautifully presented. A Munich! Well, this could make me drool as a youngster. Anyway, back to Real Madrid. The first thing you're going to notice now that I've laid this game out is that the pitch is small. I've left the Subutio fencing around the outside of my full-size Pegasus Astro pitch so you can see just how compact everything is. Now I think this has two issues. If the pitch is smaller to make it easier for youngsters to play, there's a problem. The pitch is good and very smooth. But when you're learning to play, just the gentlest flick sends a ball out of play, long ways or width ways. And if you're a bit older, like us, it's all far too compact, more like a seven a side pitch. On a full size pitch, the smaller flat base players chip well. They can pass accurately too. And can shoot with real power. On the basis that a change is as good as a rest and for the sake of variety, we're not going to do the standard test today. As the Real Madrid 
flexible subutio players are designed to be sliding players, I'm going to compare them to Zugo. And here we've got the Nigerian national team. Well, the first thing we notice is that the Real Madrid player is of much slighter build than the Zugo player. The base is a little bit lower. Let's turn them over and see what's offered on the sliding front. And the blue base of that Sabutio player looks nowhere near as smooth as his Zugo counterpart. Right, let's start with a bit of crown green bowls. And what we're going to do is we're going to use four of each team. On the basis, we'll get a much better idea of consistency throughout the team set. Subutio players first. A bit of a wobble. Wow, a curling roll and still a five scored. Player three, much better. And same for number four. 10 scored. Zugo next. A graceful three. Such a satisfying slide. Oh, we have a gap. Let's try and fill it. Spot on. So, three, six, nine, ten again. So, with the chip test, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to put three balls on the shooting line, three players, bish bash bosh, and let's see which of Zugo or the new flexible Subutio player is the most consistent. Zugo first. One. Two. Three. Can Subutio match it? Yes. Yes. And yes. Now a precision sliding test. Cut the ball into the net without ball or player hitting an opponent. Perfectly clean. So Bucho now. Oh, ricocheted into a defender. Now a precision chip. The ball just short of an inch high. Distance between the ad board and the crossbar just under an inch and a half. Zugo first. Sweet. Now Sabutio. Hammered in. By way of a conclusion, the results were pretty similar. But as you will have seen for yourself, on the sliding tests, the Zugo players glided across the surface, whereas our flexible Sabutio set from uh, Real Madrid, they bounced, they curled, they stuttered. Uh, they weren't all that smooth. When it came to chipping, particularly on the higher Subutio board chip, the Zugo player achieved that goal in three attempts. With the flexible Subutio player, it took me seven. So in a comparison between the two, it's the Zugo player every day of the week when it comes to sliding play. As for the flexible Subutio player from the Real Madrid set, Still not all that bad. We're going to stick with the new Sabucho theme for a moment or two longer because it's time for the November edition quiz question. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> we didn't rehearse that at all. <laughs> right, it's long been debated. Which Brazilian World Cup squad was the better? 1970 in Mexico or 1982 in Spain? Now the answer should be obvious because in 1970 they went on to win it. However, in 1982, they got knocked out along the way. This month's quiz question is, what side knocked Brazil out of the 1982 Spanish World Cup? If you know the answer, send us an email to the address below. You normally do that. I know, Can right? you do some finger work with those shiny nails? <laughs> Drop us an answer to the email address below and Danielle will do the draw next month. You enjoy doing that, don't you? I love it. The set with an inlay tray features England versus Brazil and is offered in association with our chums at Subutio World. Now, you've got to stay with us because in a short while we are doing a feature on football shirts, 
both the real ones and the impact they've had on table football. And I've really enjoyed researching that. So you have to go and get your grease stuff together. Leave it with me. Cool. And in the meantime, Smithy and I had an invite from the Old Sod Subutio Club. Where was my invite? Uh, quick thinking and action here. You're neither old, nor are you the other thing. We've been invited to go and celebrate their second anniversary, which means playing some beauty all day, having a go with some flats, and Adam Lundy has promised there will be pork pies, which is why Smithy sat in the car, ready to go now, like a four-year-old. <laughs> so I've packed the flats into a bag, and I've packed our Subutio Challenge pitch into here as well, as the Subutio Challenge is coming on the road with us. Wow, so much excitement. Our fun. So I'm off to Droitwich, you're off to get your grease stuff. Yeah. We'll see you in a bit. We got. from that. <laughs> <laughs> Can we assume that everybody around the table collects? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that yeah, true? Yeah, 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 to yeah. different yeah. levels. Yeah. yeah. Right, different. come on in. So if we can start with Rich and go around. So what's your ultimate collectible item? It's one that I've got, which is a Anderlecht celluloid flat team, which is actually on white bases, but I have now managed to get hold of a set of lilac bases. So the two might get joined together at some God. point. Right, that first one it ticks my box of things, things I want. Mine's so. a cl classic heavyweight, Sam Benetes, the red and white shirt. And you have it? I have it, yes, yes. Oh, the holy grail. Of I wish I had asked this question. <laughs> <laughs> Come on then, Adam. Mine Jesus. is a team that I've made of uh, Star Wars Stormtroopers. That's one of its prized possession, and yeah. I play with it all the time. Yeah, please. definitely a one-off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, come cool, on, you got to compete now. Come on. I've only just started, so uh, everything I've got has been given to me really by everybody else around here. I've started out uh, only probably three or four months ago, and everyone here has given me pitches or tips or helped me start really. Is there currently a prized possession? Is there one item you're looking at now thinking, love that? Not that I've got. No, no, the West Brom team. <laughs> so last but not least, what are you collecting? Okay, um, I've got a mixed bag of collections really. I, I do like playing with lightweights, although again, I do collect heavyweights. Um, when I was a child, I had a Reference 61, um, which I used to play with all the time, and it was Northampton Town. Um, and I've been from Northampton originally, uh, it was quite close to me. But then as a, an adult, you move house, da -da -da. a lot of my Sabutio stuff was broken or lost. Uh, and then later on I managed to replace it uh, by one of the fellow collectors here who sold me a 61 and also I have a 61 um, in the Partick Thistle as well so really they're my two favourite teams. If I'd been here I'd have outbid you for the 61. <laughs> <laughs> now Smithy and I have talked about this a lot. We think we'd both be too embarrassed to go off on our own to join a club and yet all of you have talked John was saying it was a, you did that before you even started playing again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So you're all pro club because you're here. Yeah. But do you get the idea that there'll be players out there who don't want to or feel nervous about it? You, yeah, very much so. I understand the reason why people wouldn't do. They, I think I guess they'd be <clears throat> concerned that the way that they play isn't the way that everybody else plays mm. or the people at the club play. I guess they'd be concerned about getting beat quite heavily. But there um, is, there's no need for that. No. Yeah, just turn up and enjoy it. That's, exactly. what, that's what we say. That's yeah, what I yeah, do. That's the really kind of 
Mm. I think that's, that's been the advantage of this one. In that, I mean, I was a member of another club recently, or well, two or three years ago, but it was too serious. Mm. In fact, they all started playing the slidey game rather than the mm. old beauty of game. Mm. Here, this is just like back back to my you know, former days as a youth, where you just got some friends together and played. And that's what this seems to be. It seems to re replicate that very well. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, I'm surprised you can remember that, John. To, <laughs> <I know. laughs> <laughs> to me, it, it, it's also like it's almost like back to your youth again, to a point yeah. where yeah. you can relive those times with your old mates you used to play with. But obviously, we're all a lot older now. Um, you know, but we we certainly fun is the main ingredient that we we like to instil in old sides football. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the beauty yeah. brought us together, but it doesn't keep us together. That, yeah. that's, that's yeah. how we look at it. So. Yeah. Is there a set rule about what's going to be on the pitch? What player type? When each time you meet, you have a yeah. yeah. Yes, I, there, there is. Oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah, um, you can only use proper Sabutio teams with us. So like heavyweights, lightweights, or modern replicas of those. Mm. For example, top spin. Santiago. Yeah. Um, we don't allow the modern flat bases uh, within our club mm -hmm. at all. Um, Spitfires. Yeah, no, and we don't fires. we don't allow the solid one no. piece bases either. It has to be a two piece um, <coughs> old t type of Sabutio base. Um, celluloids are welcome also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we yeah, love, we love, like, we love playing. We all love playing with the old celly flat teams. As you saw earlier. Yeah. Um, no, doesn't mean to say that we're any good with them. No. <laughs> but we, we all have great fun playing with them. Other than Sabutia, were there any great tabletop games that any of you got? Yeah, I had um, a big league set. Um, round about, I don't know, 76 or 77. And then um, I think the next year or the year after that, I was bought a uh, very early Super Striker set, uh, which I loved and played with as well. Um, and then developed a passion for Sabutio as well. Okay. Any other tabletop games? For me, the, the football was just Sabutio. I'm not sure uh, of the era, but I don't remember a big league or striker person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got a nipper amongst us. Adam, you're a young man. What was your tabletop experience? Mine, um, Sabutio. Mm -hmm. I loved playing Sabutio. Yeah, I was from the late 80s, early 90s, so it's the lightweight era. Mm -hmm. um, but also computer games. Mm -hmm. yeah. So my only real experience of table football was Sabutio, um, but I absolutely loved it, <coughs> and I still love it now. John? Yeah, prior to Sabutio, the one I had was the magnetic football with oh, sticks. Wow, yeah. which oh, you saw that? I saw that, I saw that on that drive. Yeah. Me and my brother used to fight with the sticks. <laughs> Bridge, early uh, days. Always. Out and out Sabutio, from about 76 I started playing. Used to pop along to civil <coughs> sports in Hal's own, pick up my team. Go back home, play Sabutio, get frustrated, break the player, go back the following Saturday and get a new team. <laughs> just carried on for quite a long while. Uh, right, okay, last question for all the chaps, which is our controversial question of the day. Is Sabutio a toy or is Sabutio a game? I would say both, but that's my personal opinion. Mm. I, I'd go with toy yeah. for me because you play with it. Yeah. Yeah. To me, it's it is definitely it's a game yeah. as well. Bit of both. Yeah, I think I'd, I'd say a bit of both. I think because you're playing against somebody, <clears throat> it also makes it a game as well. I as think what could make it a game is, is for me personally, is the physicality of it. Because to yeah. me, it's quite a demand. It. I mean, you know, it's the you're standing game, up definitely. for six hours or whatever, having a banter, having games, and it, it, it's quite physically demanding. <clears> I think. I mean, taking, I get home and I think I'm taking it one level further. <laughs> It's a game and not a sport. Do we ever think it's a sport? No, no, no in my eyes, no, 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 not at all. Smithy? No. 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 <laughs> well, you're unanimous <laughs> on that. Yeah. Chaps, on behalf of us both, a massive thank you because although we were expecting to enjoy ourselves today, we have enjoyed ourselves far more than we anticipated, even if we haven't won a game yet. But trust me, uh, this month's Table Football Monthly will be the longest programme ever because we're not <laughs> leaving until we do win. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, chaps. Thank you. I imagine after four episodes of Table Football Monthly, you've come to realise just what a slick production this is. Here's me co-presenter, me doddery co-presenter. How are you feeling, Smithy? Back. Oh, ask me where I ache. Where do you ache? Don't ask. Oh, as bad as that. All day, Sabutio, never again.
<laughs> now, I have to say, I've had it. there were two elements of our visit to the old Sods Club um, that did us both in. One is those guys play the new Advanced Subutio room. Far too fast. <laughs> it was non-stop. <laughs> to their credit, they're a fit bunch, aren't Oh, they? yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Smithy and I play the old 1968 Advanced Rules, which enable us to have a little bit of a... <laughs> A little bit of a stretch and a creak yeah, as we go. And a, and a stroll around the pitch. Uh, but it was enjoyable. <laughs> oh, yes. Very it was so. enjoyable. We just can't yeah. move. Yeah, so, um, yeah. to all the chaps at the Old Sods Club, if you're watching, uh, <clears throat> Volterol owe you money, as we've just been <laughs> and bought two <laughs> full-size tubes. Um, now, this is normally where I'd say, go and get... The old training ground of dreams. Yeah, prepared for yeah. our Subutio Challenge. But it's not here. We packed it up and took it on the road with us yesterday and invited the old Sods members to have a go. To their credit, they stepped up to the Yorkie. Each and every one of them had a go. So for today, let's see how Richard Roper gets on at our away day, Subutio Challenge. Contestant number five, Richard Roper, 38 to beat. Okay, starting from now. Three. Second shot. Eight. Good work. Third shot. Oh, well oh, done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight. Round one. Eight scored. Mm -hmm. So from the same one, yeah? Yeah. yeah He's yeah, clipped yeah, it. Yeah, that didn't we? Yeah. Five points. Shot two. Strong hit. Another five. Final shot. Always oh, fallen short. 18 points in total. Long distance bonus is on. One out of Eight. One. Come on, Rich. Second shot. Oh. One out of two. Come on, one more. Go on, Rich. So you've got eight already. Come on. Oh. Oh. Vicious, vicious. Eight for round three. 21 in total. Shot one. Oh, go, Rich. Go on. Go on, Rocket. Yeah! Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Yeah. So, there's a five on 21. Yeah. 20, 26. 30 30 31 is on. 30 31. 30 31. 30 31. 31 Rockets. Come on. Come on, we're 31. Come Second on, shot. Go on. Go on. Oh, Rocky. Come on, we need another five. Let's do Come it. On, Come on, Rich. Come on, Tom. Come on. Come on, Rich. Bang it in. Right, you're second in the table now. Only two are in their 30s. Yeah. Five scored, making a total of 31. Brilliant effort. Chris Burford remains top of the table with 38. Richard Roper, a close second with 31. Right, we're gonna keep rattling on because we have got oodles. oodles we are still trying to pack in to this month's edition. Now, this feature we have put together has been enormous fun for me and a subject I find really interesting. Let's hope I'm not on my own. I wouldn't that. have thought so. No, no. No. We're going to take a look at how the evolution and changes in real football shirts over the decades have had an impact on and influenced the tabletop football players that we've been using. Excellent. You're up for that, I am you? up for that. I shall be right back. Oh, why does that give me a bad, bad feeling? So let's have a look at the story of football shirts. Danielle! Tell me about it, Stud. Danielle! You look great. But when I said Greece, I meant the blue football shirt. Uh-uh. You just said bring your grease stuff. I'm glad there's not a football club called Emmanuel. That must be a really old movie. I haven't seen that. You're fired. Football shirts, simple, the top half of your football kit. But no, the massive changes in style and design over the decades, allied to the feverish growth in image rights and club branding, have had a massive impact on the game we love and on the game we love. We are going to start, I don't know why I keep doing that. We are going to start our journey way back in the 1930s. Back then, football strips were warm, they were baggy, and they were relatively basic. 
There was certainly no manufacturer's branding on the shirts. There was rarely even a club badge and there was definitely never a name on the back of the shirt. Well, up in Liverpool in 1929, a gentleman called Bill Keeling had devised this tabletop football game. It's called New Footy and is seen by many of us as the forerunner to Subutia. Now this set is from 1936. By this time, Mr Keeling had realised there was a commercial benefit in providing teams in these boxes that matched the requirements of his customers. And so in these carefree, image right and copyright free days, he was able to slot the two Sheffield clubs, Wednesday and United, into the box and naturally was replicating what people were seeing at their football grounds. By the time the Second World War drew to a close, understandably, association football took a short while to get back on its feet again. But Mr Keeling and New Footy had evolved even further. Their post-war players were taller, they were on a larger base, they had numbers on the backs of their shirts, and they resembled the real thing more than ever. And for a young footballer at the time, these must have felt fantastic on the tabletop, a real chance to replicate the real game. In 1947, Peter Adolf launched his new game, Subutio, and although he didn't go as far as putting numbers on the backs, his players too replicated what people were seeing on Pathé News and at their local football grounds. There's a foul. One of the players took quite a knock, and the ref awards Blackpool a free kick. Mortensen takes it. Wham! He's done it. It's in. Tabletop players could browse the Subutio pamphlet and choose the team of their choice. By the early 60s, everything had changed. Rock and roll had happened. The kids had Elvis, Bernie Holly, Gene Vincent. Ah! Young football fans wanted their football stars to look like rock and rollers, not like younger versions of their dad. Dennis Law and Jimmy Greaves both spent time playing in Italy. Both were excellent examples of footballing idols for this new generation. Danielle's right. Rock and roll created a whole new social culture, the teenager. But there were other things going on. The end of the 50s saw the end of post-war austerity. People had a few more pennies in their pocket. In 1961, Britain was on the up. In March, the Jaguar E-Type was launched, a supersonic car for a new age. Tottenham Hotspur did the double, and Subutio wanted to mirror this excitement with a brand new player type. These hand-painted plastic three-dimensional figures look so vibrant with their V-necks, their short sleeves, and their short shorts mirroring our heroes on the pitch. And compared to the flats, they looked amazing. Although as a footnote, they may not have worked quite so well. In 1964, BBC Two launched an iconic programme, Match of the Day. Suddenly we could see what kits the players were wearing, although it was in black and white. But we still had the newsreels to see the new colours and the new styles of football shirt. In 1966, England won the World Cup with Jeff Hurst's glorious hat-trick available in Technicolor. The Beatles had released Revolver, one of the greatest musical albums ever. Britain was on the move. 1966 began three years of unbelievable British success. After the World Cup in 67, Celtic achieved the Scottish treble, becoming the first British club to win the European Cup. In 1968, in one of football's most romantic stories, 10 years after the Munich air disaster, Manchester United became the first English club to win the European Cup, and they did it at Wembley, and Bobby Charlton, a Munich survivor, scored twice. Football was reaching fever pitch, and it was in 1966 that Charles Stadden created the heavyweight, and suddenly, not only were the kits looking just like our heroes, but so were the players. Now this is something I find remarkable. This is The Wonderful World of Soccer Stars, a football picture stamp album published by FKS, one of a long running series. So when we open it, we get to see head and shoulder shots 
of all the first division teams, which is rather lovely. And let's face it, FKS were quite happy with the number of us who collected them. But the players are one interesting part. For this segment we're doing, it's the very, very final page that spikes our interest. Have a look at this bottom paragraph and it will blow you away. FKS are almost boasting about the fact they are using club names and player images without paying anyone a penny. All oh, these days were soon going to come to an end. Consecutive years, 69, 70, 70, 71, 71, 72, 72, 73, oh, we've jumped one, 74, 75. All of these stamp collections contain that same paragraph. But these days of freedom and of innocence were coming to an end. In the Midlands, a company called Admiral were designing new football shirts. They approached the then Leeds United manager, Don Revy, and asked him in return for a few bob, would he like to see his team sporting their range of shirts? Well, there was a recession on and Don Revy, like most of us, wasn't one to turn down a few crispy banknotes. So before long, Leeds United fans witnessed their side stepping out at Ellen Road in these new sparkly football shirts. Shortly thereafter, Don Revy was offered the England job, taking over from Joe Mercer, who'd been caretaker after Sir Ralph Ramsey had been rather unfortunately relieved of his job. Well, you won't be surprised to know that shortly after Don Revy was in the manager's chair, England was sporting Admiral shirts and a new colour scheme. It wasn't to everybody's taste, but still there are many football fans to this day who remember fondly the red, white and blue Admiral strip. In the first division, other clubs were following suit. They were queuing up to get the shirts. Leicester City, Manchester United, you name it. And everybody was waking up to the value of a football shirt. By 1977, it wasn't just about Admiral and other shirt manufacturers. By summer of the same year, shirt sponsorship rules were relaxed, forever changing the game we love. By the end of the 70s, Already under immense pressure from global demand for the game, Subutio were facing a shirt dilemma of their own. The increasing complexity of football shirts meant that their outworkers, who were already painting seven days a week to meet demand, could no longer cope. It was time to modernise, but that presented a problem. The fantastic and popular heavyweight created by Charles Stadden did not lend itself to machine painting and therefore a newer player type was called for. The replacement, the player that was to become known as the zombie, in terms of design and style, a massive step backwards. In solving the machine painting issue with the zombie, Sabutio walked straight into a new problem. No one liked it. So the early part of 1980 was spent researching yet another new player type. And this time they did a much better job. Say hello to the lightweight. This new design with the player on a peg fitting into the base gave us a range of colors, the like of which we'd never seen before. And before long, they were even managing to match the sponsors. We were back where we began. We could replicate real association football. Since the early 80s, sponsors have come and sponsors have gone. Shirt designs change every season. They've become a massive revenue for football clubs. No longer do they just have one away strip. There's a first away strip, a second away strip, and quite often a third. But ultimately, we have come full circle with where we started earlier in the programme. All of which leads us nicely to this new Sabutio Real Madrid set. And these beautifully, immaculately reproduced, sponsored shirts. Only now the days of innocence are long behind us. Copyright displayed and license paid for. A change for the better? I'm not sure it's for me to say. He doesn't think so. 
We arrived together! We did! It's almost like this show is planned. <laughs> and I told you wearing the leather was way better than wearing any old football shirt. I think Leather Monthly would be a completely <laughs> different show altogether. But still, thank you for bearing with us through that shirt feature. I really enjoyed doing that. I did as well. I learned so much. That's a first for this programme. <laughs> right, we are on the final part of the show now. But before we move on, I've got to share a fantastically silly competition with you that we are desperately looking forward to. Next month in the December issue, we are doing a goal of the year. We're doing this in association with the Solo Fantasy League and Subutio World. And all you have to do is, is send us an MP4 of your best goal off your phone or film it off an old khaki camera. Can uh, I enter? Everybody can enter. Everybody must enter. Uh, <laughs> send us an MP4 of your best goal. We don't mind if you create it specially. And we will show the best six next month. But the winner will receive fifty pounds. To... <gasps> fifty pounds. I don't think fifty pounds warranted that <laughs> level of excitement. Fifty pounds to spend at Subutio World. But that's not all. We are giving away a trophy. A trophy. Table Football Monthly's first ever trophy. That's so exciting. It'd be great if I could show it to you right now. But we haven't ordered it. <laughs> but I can guarantee. It will not be a rubbish trophy. No. This is Table Football Monthly. <laughs> we're going to have it specially carved by a specially carvy man. <laughs> That's all we're going to do. To enter our Goal of the Year competition, send an MP4 clip of one goal to the usual address before December the 16th. Entries will be judged by Keith, Smithy, Peter Marshall, Peter Whitehead and myself. And the winning goal will be announced in our December the 21st upload. So do enter that, please. So we are going to do Goal of the Year Next month, fifty pounds at Beauty World. And yep. a trophy. Yeah. And if you'd like to enter, do write to us on the address below. You are quite right. That also goes for if you want to enter our uh, England Brazil Subutio competition, and if your trigger finger is itching to have a go on our Subutio challenge, it's the same address. We love the Subutio challenge. Wait, wait. We Where's Smithy? Ah, now there's a question. He was here, or just there, <laughs> and his last words were, I'll be back. Now there's a mystery. I wonder, I wonder if he's nursing his wounds from his day with the old sods. Which reminds me, a big, big thank you to the old sods of Ujo Club for kindly allowing Smith and I to join them uh, on their second anniversary. A day full of Subutio and a mountain of pork pies. <laughs> which is all it takes to get Smithy out the house. So I think we're just about done, except to thank you uh, genuinely um, for taking the time to watch the programme. We really do appreciate it. We love the kind comments. We love the shares and we love the emails. If you have emailed us, you'll know we always try and reply. Well, that just about does it, doesn't it? It does. We'll see you next month for the December Table <gasps> Football Monthly, which is going to be Christmas. Christmas! Uh, so we're going to be plotting and planning ways to make that as festive and as jolly for us all as we possibly can. So thank you again, and we will see you next month. Bye. Bye. After you. Thank you. Oi, Linda. I'm ready to do my shirt bit now. It's the Evers. Sorry about the grease thing. It's all right.